Yo, what is up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you the Recluse Auto Clutch pros and cons. So this video is going to be a no fluff, in-depth view of how the Recluse Auto Clutch works and how it can benefit you and how it may have some drawbacks for the way you ride. I'm not going to tell you if you should or shouldn't install one of these. I'll leave that up to you, but I want to show you exactly how it works so that you know if it's the right option for you to put in your dirt bike. So first off, welcome to the uh, foggy mountains of Hawaii. And with me here today, I have my lovely model. Uh, this is my KTM 250SX, which I named Old Smokey. It's not a late model bike, it's a 2009. So uh, we called her Old and uh, she's a two stroke, so I called her Smokey. So today I'm gonna demonstrate uh, all the functions of uh, Recluse Auto Clutch that I can think of. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna show you exactly how it operates and um, hopefully you guys will leave some comments below if you have other questions um, possibly that I don't cover in this video, but I'm gonna try and be very thorough on how this thing operates. So basically what it does is it turns your manual transmission, manual clutch motorcycle into an semi-auto. Yes, it's sort of like a kid's bike where you just can click the transmission and the clutch use is minimal or nil. Now, myself and Recluse would probably recommend that you still use the clutch normally for up and down shifts. Um, I actually do recommend still using it normally to start and stop because for no other reason that if you develop the crutch of starting and stopping without using the clutch because the Recluse lets you, um, you might start your bike in gear and have it take off on you. So that's probably actually a good place to start. So right now my bike is in neutral. It rolls, no clutch. Put my hand right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inch down and I'm gonna put it into first gear. Now I'm gonna start my bike without the clutch pulled in at all. Put my hand down here on the seat and I'm gonna give it a little tiny bit of gas because this bike wants a little tiny bit of gas and I'm also gonna hold the front brake. Okay, so. My bike is currently in first gear. You can see how that works. <laughs> so that would be the first con actually of the Recluse Clutch. You can start your bike in gear. So that's good and bad. Obviously if you're in the trail and you tip it over or something, it'll start much easier. Um, I would still pull the clutch in, but it'll start much easier. Some bikes are kind of a pain in the butt because the clutch is a little bit grabby to start in gear. Usually not when they're warm, but you get my drift. I'm trying to cover all bases here. So the drawback and what I'm going to show you is if your bike is seemingly in neutral, I mean, there's a you can feel the transmission a little bit, but it mostly feels like it's in neutral. You're tired, not paying attention. So I'm going to cover the brake and I'm going to kickstart the bike and I'm gonna grab a little bit more throttle this time. <laughs> and this will be your con example. Ah! And you go right into the weeds. <laughs> so I pulled in the clutch to stop myself. So I will demonstrate that one more time. Bike is currently in gear. Pay attention to that my left hand is not on the clutch. I'm gonna cover the brake with my hand. I'm gonna give it like third of a throttle and you'll see it take off. So if you have one of those bikes or if you're one of those people that gives it gas when you start, this would this could be a problem. <laughs> okay, you got my uh, creepy sound effects in there. So we've covered that. Con number one, the bike will take off and it will start when it's in gear with no clutch. So moving on, we'll move on to a benefit. A benefit of this is you can navigate very, very slow stuff without using the clutch. And the bike just is freewheeling and as you give it more throttle, the clutch locks up and propels you forward. So basically it's the perfect slip. So if you're just doing tight maneuvers, which I will show you, we're, uh, I don't know if we're in neutral or not, so here's an example. I'm just gonna pull the clutch in. Start it, I didn't take off into the middle of nowhere. I'll make sure it's in gear. I actually was in neutral. I'm gonna let out the clutch normally, and we're just gonna come out here into this open part. 
I'm going to take my hand off and I'm going to basically do full lock turns with this thing in first gear without my hand on the clutch. So this, this ground is a little bumpy and I'm, and I'm currently one-handed, so it's not that the clutch is herky-jerky, it's actually very, very smooth. It all just depends on your throttle hand. Full stop, front brake. Okay, I'm in first gear. I'm going to go ahead now and click it up into second gear. There we go, found second. I can verify that it's in second. I still don't need the clutch. Now this is where, if you ride your bike in the wrong gear all the time, like if you just love to ride at a gear high, it's going to be harder on the clutch. This particular bike has what's called torque drive in it. I'll shut the engine off for a second. This particular bike has torque drive, which is Recluse's uh, super high performance clutch. And what that is, um, I should say fiber discs. It's their super high performance fiber discs. They're very, very thin, and it allows you to get more discs in the clutch pack. So if your bike normally had eight, with the Recluse torque drive, you have nine. Not all Recluse auto clutches come with torque drive. It's, a, it's an expensive feature. Torque drive is their manual clutch plates that say a lot of factory motocrossers would use. Or I believe even enduro guys like Graham Jarvis and stuff because they lock up a lot harder. It's just like a performance clutch in a race car. I have an auto clutch in this thing called EXP technology. And then I have torque drive also in this thing, which is their fancier, harder locking clutch plates. Full circle, if you ride your bike in the wrong gear, it will accelerate the wear on your clutch. It's kind of like if you just had your hand on the clutch and had it partly pulled in all the time. It's always slipping because you're not in the correct gear and it's not locked up. I don't recommend that you just put your bike in third gear and fourth gear and just bog it around everywhere because that's not right. That's hard on the clutch and the engine. If you want to buy lots of clutches, um, go ahead and ride the thing around in fourth gear all the time. These are good clutches. They are tough clutches. But, you know, if you have poor maintenance, um, you know, crappy oil in them, and you just ride your bike in the wrong gear all the time, it will accelerate wear. I have friends that have had recluse clutches for a long time, and they've actually never replaced them. That's pretty impressive. And I know that the pros that use the torque drive clutches in the motocross bikes, which is just the fancy fiber plates, those guys are getting more hours out of those clutches than they are, say, a stock clutch. If they ran a stock clutch for eight hours or whatever, maybe they're getting 10 or 12 out of the recluse. Those are completely made up numbers, so don't flame me for whatever. So now we're still in second gear. I can actually hear the counter shaft clicking down there a little bit. I'm gonna pull the clutch in so that I don't take off and crash into this tree over here. And I'm gonna start the bike in second gear and try and keep it running. All right probably need to turn my idle up just a tad. So while it's idling down, I can let the clutch lever out. I'm in second gear and the recluse doesn't have enough RPMs to engage yet. So take off in second gear. And then I'll do some tighter turns without my hand on the handlebar. Full stop. Now I would say that this is probably not terribly hard on the clutch just being in second gear like this. And it's it's highly beneficial, you know, like I said, in tight stuff where let's say you're navigating over a bunch of rocky crap. We'll use this little tree stuff as an example. And you're just trying not to stall your bike, especially on your four-stroke. I'm clicked down into first gear now. And you saw I use my fingers to click it down into first gear but you can navigate through really tight, slippery stuff without risk of stalling the bike. It just won't stall. <laughs> Unless your idle's too low, then it might stall. But, you know, when you get down here with this tree root, oh man. So, let's say you've been riding for three hours and your hand's all tired. 
you know, you, you work a lot and you, your hands just aren't very strong because you only get to ride on the weekends. I'm still in gear, by the way. And, uh, you know, you just don't have the strength. So you've been riding in the trails with your buddies. It's hot, it's summertime, you're dehydrated, whatever. I'm talking too much. So that allows you to navigate through that stuff without just modulating your clutch all the time because you're a working man. So here's where you can use the automatic to do that, but let's say you get your front wheel stuck in a hole like we are right now. And I got this little stick right here. You know, we can still use this clutch to pop over this obstacle like we normally would, all right? And we can just do our normal clutch stuff to get her back in over the log. I'm gonna redo that without using the clutch, the lever that is. We're gonna get in here, and let's say that we were on ice or something, and we just can't have that wheel spin, or we're on slippery creek bed rocks. We can just, you know, kind of bog this up in there. We could do that little pop, and then we could just kind of bog over those. Oops, we spun. Bog over those wet rocks like that. So, super, super cool. That's why this thing is really good in technical terrain because, you know, if you don't have perfect modulation in your hand anymore, you can't do the super tight maneuver stuff. Okay, so once again, people ask me, you know, is it fully automatic? Do I still have to shift? Yes, you still have to shift. It is a normal dirt bike that you now don't always have to use the clutch to keep it from stalling and stuff. So you do have to shift. Your shifter's still there. It does not change the gears in your transmission at all. All it does is turn the bike into a semi-automatic bike. So yes, you still have to shift. Uh, let's show you like a, a whole shot. Okay, so you're probably not gonna go to the racetrack and click your bike into second gear on the starting line and take off like that. Although you could, and if it was really slippery, that might actually work. <laughs> so more than likely what you would do is you would roll up to the starting gate like this. You know, rev up your bike, clear it out a little bit. And then don't click it into gear yet because the RPMs are up and it'll jump. I guess it was low enough right there. But you're sitting on the starting gate, pull in your clutch, click it into second gear, do your normal start procedure, let out your clutch while increasing the RPMs. I'm gonna do this not wide open so that you guys can actually still hear me. Load your front brake. This isn't a starting technique video, but anyway, we're loading it, getting load on the back wheel. And take off like you normally would. All right, so that's an instance where you would use the clutch normally. My hand is bad. I'm not going to go into the story of my hand. But what happens to me is coming into really fast corners, which I guess I'll use this one as an example because that's quite bumpy and there's a fairly tight corner at the end of it. What happens to me is this motion jams the scaphoid in my dislocating wrist too much that my hand goes numb and it does it actually through the nerves in my shoulder. It's not because I'm out of shape. I have a medical condition. I lose the control in my hand to be able to clutch and stuff while I'm braking, like sliding into the corner, getting ready to, to dump it, you know, brah, to rip out of the first corner. This thing uh, saves me a lot of the time from stalling, like if I was to lock up the wheel. Also with four strokes, if you were to flame out or something. Okay, so I'll demonstrate, I'll go through this corner at a moderate pace. I'm not gonna, not out here racing for you guys. I'm here to demonstrate. And I'll just leave this in gear with the clutch out um, so I don't waste my hand. I'm gonna go through that, but I am gonna kinda get on it a little bit on this straightaway so that you can see as I'm braking into that corner, I am not gonna use this clutch. Normally, I might still, I would at least cover it so that if I had good traction, I could, you know, explode out of that berm or whatever was there. But I don't have to use it. Still in third, actually. 
Use the clutch to shift down. So I'm in second. I won't use the clutch in any of these corners right here. These are real tight little corners. So all second gear. All second gear, no clutch. One more time. No risk of stall. This thing's idling right now. It's basically coasting through this corner. And then it just perfectly auto slips. Okay, so I'm gonna film this next little segment for you guys. Um, I don't have a big hill climb right here in this area. It's too foggy. You guys might have a hard time even seeing this. But um, I'm going to use this tiny little hill to demonstrate a con. The con of this thing would be if you were going up a hill climb and you start, stalled the bike. For whatever reason, if the bike dies, like let's say it's just too slippery and you turned off the engine, what can happen is you're still in neutral basically all the time because the clutch isn't locked up. When you're in gear and there's no RPMs, the clutch is not locked up. So therefore, you're always essentially in a kind of a neutral. Well, you get up that big hill climb and you turn your engine off. If you're on a steep hill and you just hit your front brake, it just slides back down the hill. On a hill, when you're off the bike and you're not on the same side as the brake lever, normally on a normal bike, especially a four-stroke that has a lot of compression, you can hop off the side of the bike and it will be on the side of the slope locked in gear and you could manipulate the clutch to help slide yourself down that hill climb. With the recluse, it's I'm in first gear. It's rolling forward and it's rolling backwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna get on the side of this hill and I'm gonna do a third person view of this too so you can see me on the side of the hill. Okay, I had to turn off my engine, the bike stalled. Currently, I'm depressing the rear brake so that I don't slide backwards. As soon as I take my foot off that rear brake, and I already am, I'm gonna slide. Okay, so with a bike that had gears and a manual clutch, the transmission would still be locked up, and when I took my foot off the brake, it would not slide backwards like that and just skid with the front tire. So I will uh, put the tripod down so that you guys can see that. Bikes in gear. <laughs> okay, I've now covered basically the two main cons. Being able to start in gear and having the thing take off on you and sliding backwards down a hill because you have nothing to stop the rear wheel from spinning. The front brake does not work on hills going backwards. So in that case, a lot of people install a rear brake on the left side of the bike. That way, the, and there's a company called Clake that makes some really nice ones, at least if you have KTMs. I imagine if you put a hydraulic clutch on anything, you can you can use a clake but it's a two lever system they have multiple ones but there's a two lever system that pulls the clutch and the brake at the same time or you can put your finger over to the side and activate just the clutch with the second finger and not use the rear brake i'm going to go through this grass that's really rocky it's the most technical thing i have right now it's not terribly technical but at least it'll give you some sort of um, slightly better than the example earlier of how you could use this thing doing a lot of slow crawling in tight technical stuff and not you know just have to be riding on the clutch all the time and there's a lot of haters out there of these things great you can hate anything you want I'm not here to be the hate police but a lot of people could really really benefit not all are gonna become professional enduro riders we're not all going to be billy bolts and graham jarvis and stuff those guys don't need these things 
a really good rider, a strong rider, maybe a rider to rides all the time, does not need one of these. The rest of us are weekend warriors. If you're not competing, you're not cheating, unless your buddies seem to think that you're, you're a doucher because you happen to run a recluse clutch. Personally, it's a safety issue. This hand, I lose the feeling in it, and I can't feel where my clutch manipulation is. When I can't feel the position of my clutch while modulating it, it can be real troublesome for me. If I was having to hit some short little hill climb with vert in it, instead of just kind of giving a little pop on the clutch, like my numb hand pulls it in halfway instead of a third of the way, and I just blah, and it, and it drops and jumps out from underneath me and moon launches my bike. This thing has given me a ton of confidence in knowing that I'm not going to use up my hand as fast, number one, and I'm not going to over clutch the bike in a technical situation. I'll go through here, no clutch. You can see that you know, there's, some, there's some good size rocks in here. Like right there, the RPMs came up a little bit because I, I grabbed a little bit too much throttle. And so I pulled in the clutch to stop the wheel. So the, the clutch is still extremely helpful. Now that I have a loss of traction, I can just let this thing do what it wants without even using the clutch. I still normally would, like I said, but I can get up get up into this. All right, so I'm going to park the bike and, and show you. I mean, this is technical enough stuff. I know the video is going to flatten everything out, but you know, it's all hidden in the grass. These are very, very large rocks and you can just crawl through there. It makes everything a lot safer. Yes, you can bump start your bike with a recluse clutch. You just have to adjust out the free play gain to be able to get the clutch to lock up to be able to bump start it. Yes, it is slightly a pain in the butt. I think the benefits outweigh the negatives. On a KTM, you turn that screw in right there to adjust out the free play gain and make the clutch lock up. On a Japanese bike without a hydraulic clutch, you're gonna do that at the lever. So I'm sure this video is getting quite lengthy, so I'm just gonna show you a few more things. Once again, the clutch works as usual it does not change anything about how this works so let's say that you are trying to clear some big double out of the corner and it's a real tight corner and you need to drop the clutch and seat bounce to jump it i'm going to use once again our little hill to do that so come out of a tight berm The bike would not pull like that normally. I'll go back over there in second gear and do that again without using the clutch. Rolling out of the corner. Okay, we wouldn't have cleared the double. <laughs> Okay, there you have it. Recluse Auto Clutch pros and cons. Uh, weather's starting to change on me here. We've uh, covered all the basics anyway, so I hope that helps clear up any questions you have. Do normal maintenance to your clutch. Change your oil normally. Every once in a while, you're gonna have to adjust the free play gain. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have more comments, questions, uh, leave them down below. Please try and keep it civil. I mean, if you don't like recluses, go watch another video. We're trying to help people learn here. We're trying to help people have fun ride dirt bikes. 
I always appreciate you guys watching. Um, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I like to do kind of um, how-to instructional sort of stuff like this to help people out so that we can get more people out on dirt bikes and more people enjoying this awesome sport. From the foggy mountains of Hawaii, aloha, hang loose my friends.